Today, we're gonna to be doing one of the most popular road trips in the Western United States, Las Vegas to the Grand Canyon. As you can probably tell by this giant glass pyramid and sphinx behind me, we're gonna be starting at the Las Vegas Strip and ending at the Grand Canyon South Rim. Now, a lot of the fun of road trips isn't just getting from point A to point B, it's the places you'll find along the way, and there are a lot of great stops on this road trip. So let's get going and get out of Las Vegas. For this trip, we will be taking the fastest way to get from Las Vegas to the Grand Canyon's South Rim. Starting from the Las Vegas Strip, we will be taking Interstate 215, Interstate 11, which becomes Highway 93 in Arizona, Interstate 40, and finally, Arizona State Route 64. In all, the trip is about 280 miles. The whole trip can be done in less than five hours, but you'll definitely miss out on some cool stops along the way doing it so fast. After traveling down the Las Vegas Strip for a bit, we'll soon make our way to the interstate where our trip can really begin. Starting out the trip, Interstate 215 and Interstate 11 can be pretty boring and there are a lot of cars on the road. But before too long, you're out of Las Vegas and the road really starts to open up. It only takes about half an hour until we get to the first couple stops on the trip, both of which are located in Boulder City, Nevada, the town that built the Hoover Dam. Our first stop on this road trip is the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Boulder City. The museum preserves the heritage of the Boulder Branch Line, commissioned by the Union Pacific Railroad in 1931 to haul the literal tons of equipment and material needed to construct the massive Hoover Dam. In addition to the static displays of restored railroad equipment that once operated on Nevada's train tracks, the museum currently operates weekend heritage excursion trains on the original railroad line laid down by the Union Pacific. Admission to the museum itself is free, but there is a small charge for the train rides. Our next stop is a place that I first heard about on the Justin's Guard YouTube channel, and it's probably the scariest place you'll stop along the trip. That is, unless you've been to the Las Vegas Strip at night, and that's Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. Tom Devlin is a special makeup effects artist that has worked on over a hundred films and TV series, such as The X-Files and Puppet Master. After years of creating monsters professionally, Devlin decided to open a museum to share his personal collection with the world and preserve the art and history of special makeup effects. The museum features a who's who of movie monsters, and walking through it is a lot of fun. If you are a fan of horror movies, you could easily spend an hour or two walking through and checking everything out. In addition to all the monsters, the museum also features a number of screen used items as well. Tom Devlin's Monster Museum also has a pretty neat gift shop and clean restrooms. Shortly after leaving Boulder City, you'll start to see Lake Mead, which will be our next stop. Lake Mead is a reservoir that is formed by the Hoover Dam and is the largest reservoir in the United States in terms of water capacity. The reservoir is part of the Lake Mead National Recreation Area, which was America's first national recreation area and there is a visitor center right off Highway 93. From the visitor center, you can get some great views of Lake Mead. Unfortunately, due to drought and water usage, Lake Mead hasn't been full since the 1980s, and as of the filming of this video, is only 26% full. Our next stop is one of the architectural wonders of the world, the Hoover Dam. After making it through the Hoover Dam security checkpoint, you can park and take a short hike up to the Michael Callahan Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge to get an amazing view of the dam. This is the second highest bridge in the United States, and if you have a fear of heights, you may want to avoid heading out on it though, as the video doesn't do it justice 
for just how high it is. From the Bridge Overlook parking, it's just a short drive to the Hoover Dam itself. Here's a look back at the Mike O'Callaghan Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge from the dam. Construction of the Hoover Dam took place between 1931 and 1936. The dam was dedicated on September 30, 1935 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Its construction, which took place during the Great Depression, was the result of a massive effort involving thousands of workers with at least 112 workers dying during the construction. The Hoover Dam is absolutely massive. When you look over the southern side, you can really see just how huge it is. So right in the middle of the Hoover Dam is the state line. I'm in Nevada, and now I'm in Arizona. At the Hoover Dam, the intake towers are in different states. And as you can see, the Nevada intake tower is right behind me, and it lists Nevada time on it. Now we're gonna head over to the Arizona intake tower and do some time traveling. So now we're at the Arizona Towers, where it's actually the exact same time, so no time traveling today. Arizona doesn't observe daylight savings time, but had we come here in the winter, it would be an hour later right now. With the dam having been built in the 1930s, it has a lot of extra touches that seem to be missing from more recent construction projects. Things like ornamental gold doors and boss reliefs on the elevator towers. This tower is the women's restroom. It's on the Arizona side of the Hoover Dam. The men's is on the Nevada side of the Hoover Dam. So women pee in Arizona and men pee in Nevada. Tours are available at the dam that allow you to go inside as well for an extra cost. Another thing that is really apparent at the Hoover Dam is the water level at Lake Mead. When this video was filmed in June 2022, the lake was only 26% full. If the water level continues to drop, the dam may no longer be able to generate power. Now that we've made it into Arizona, our next stop is the Arizona Last Stop. Arizona Last Stop is a fun stop along the highway where you can grab a bite to eat, get gas, and fill up on snacks. You can also catch a monster truck ride or fire a machine gun if that's your thing. We always appreciate the uniquely decorated, fun road trip stops. They are so much more interesting than the dime a dozen gas station convenience stores you find almost everywhere while traveling. In Kingman, Arizona, the trip finally meets up with historic Route 66, and there's no better place to stop than the Kingman Visitor Center and Arizona Route 66 Museum. The Visitor Center and Museum is located inside Kingman's historic powerhouse and is a great place to get information on the road, brochures, and Route 66 souvenirs. Their Route 66 Museum is one of the better Route 66 museums around as well and definitely worth a visit. Kingman is a great Route 66 town and if you have extra time for your drive, we highly recommend taking Route 66 from Kingman to Seligman as it is part of one of the best stretches of Route 66 in the state. For this video, however, we are taking the fastest route, but if you are interested in more information on Route 66 from Kingman to Seligman, we have a full video on that drive that we'll link in the description. Even though we took the interstate to get there, which feels somewhat wrong, Seligman is another great Route 66 town, and in fact is the birthplace of historic Route 66. There are a lot of really fun shops in Seligman, and everything is located on Route 66, so it's easy to park and just walk up and down the street to check everything out. The story of Seligman being bypassed by Interstate 40 was partly the inspiration for the Disney Pixar film Cars. And of course, no trip to Seligman is complete without a visit to Angel and Vilma Delgadillo's original Route 66 gift shop where historic Route 66 began, and the snow-capped drive-in. Ash Fork is the flagstone capital of the United States, which is pretty apparent why as soon as you get into town, and is another fun Route 66 town to drive through. 
While there isn't much there as the other Route 66 towns on this trip, it does have its own Route 66 museum that is worth a stop if it's open. I think local museums are usually pretty interesting, and this one is no exception. The museum isn't too big, and you can easily see everything in about 30 minutes, but it does cover a lot of the history of Ash Fork, from the distant past up to much more recent times. Williams, Arizona is known as the gateway to the Grand Canyon and was the last Route 66 town to be bypassed by Interstate 40. Route 66 passes right through downtown Williams and we recommend parking and walking around to check out all the great shops and restaurants. If you get a chance to be in Williams at night, the downtown area looks amazing lit up. In addition to all the shops and restaurants, you can also find attractions such as a zipline ride in downtown Williams, right on Route 66. Probably the biggest attraction in Williams though, is the Grand Canyon Railway, where you could take a train from Williams to the Grand Canyon South Rim if you don't want to drive the rest of the way. The train ride is a lot of fun and even has things like train robbers on horseback during the ride. We did a whole video on taking the train to the Grand Canyon previously, which I'll link to in the description. Our next stop was once known as Flintstone's Bedrock City, but now it's called Raptor Ranch. Flintstone's Bedrock City first opened in 1972 and is a classic roadside attraction. A few years ago the park was sold and the rights to the Bedrock name expired so they decided to relaunch as Raptor Ranch, with a new focus on raptors, falconry, and wildlife conservation. The park has a number of bird demonstrations throughout the day. They were hourly on our visit, where you can really get close to some amazing birds. Not to mention getting to see some adorable chicks. Luckily, in addition to the birds, Bedrock still remains and can still be explored. Having come here since I was a kid, it's great to see that it's still around. The park has even added a few new prehistoric features, such as new dinosaurs and a fossil dig. They are working to add even more stuff to the park as well, and an obstacle course was under construction on our visit. This is such a fun stop, and a place we try to visit every time we pass by it on the way to the Grand Canyon. Tucson, Arizona is known as the door to the Grand Canyon. Located only two miles south of the park's entrance, the town has a number of gift shops, restaurants, including well-known fast food chains, and hotels. Lodging in restaurants inside the national park can get pretty pricey, so Tucson is a great budget option without going too far from the park. Tucson is also a great place to book tours of the local area, and the Grand Canyon Airport is located there as well. You can also catch a shuttle into the National Park from the town. And our final stop is of course the Grand Canyon, where upon our arrival we were immediately greeted by an elk. And the main attraction, the Grand Canyon, where no matter how many times I see it or what the weather is like, it is still breathtaking. So after about 280 miles, we've made it to a place that video just doesn't do it justice. The South Rim of the Grand Canyon. So that's the end of our road trip and our look at things to do between Las Vegas and the Grand Canyon. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.